Welcome to the High Bandwidth Word Podcast, transformative studies in the Word of God. I'm Pastor John Harris, and this is my podcast. Looking forward to this new season of studies. We're going to be opening the book of Hebrews and studying it chapter by chapter, verse by verse. This is an exciting book about the new covenant and the Lord Jesus Christ and all that He is. Grab your Bibles, grab your notebook, and let's get ready to go. Fight the good fight all of right, faith. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Um, what's it known as? The faith chapter, right? And I think we take it out of con- we we use it all the time out of context, right? We very seldom look at why that why is that chapter there, right? I mean, it's in the book of Hebrews, right? And why does it show up there? Okay, uh, we when I say we take it out of context, we we take some truth that is uh, you know goes across all the ages. For instance, like in verse one, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's what makes things real, right? If you want to, you know, if you've got if if God isn't real to you, it's because, you know, your, your faith hasn't grown. You don't see him. You can't see, you know, you need to see something you can't see with your eyes, right? It's either see it with your eyes or see it by faith. And what the Word of God says is that faith makes things, is, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. That truth of what God says in the store for you and I as the child of God becomes real because of faith. It becomes substantive. Like, you know, you can pick it up and you can hold it. It's something in your hand, Right? It's, it's something you can get a hold of. It's also the evidence of things not seen. It's, uh, you know, the, the stuff that you can go into a court of law, right, and say, you know, convict something. So it, it's, it's evidence so it convicts, right? It, 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 it lets you know that something's real. You, you, you know it's real even though you can't see it. <coughs> okay, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Um, you know it's real. You get a hold of it, right? Uh, in your hands. So why is this chapter here? We also know in verse 6 that without faith, it's what? Possible to please God, right? I mean, you need to, you need to, you know, you need to believe, you need to by faith know that He is God, all right, and that He's the rewarder of him that diligently seeks Him, right? That pleases God, that you know who He is, and that He is real, and that He's God, and he's, He can do all things, right? He's the God of the Bible, and that he rewards you for taking your life and not just living it your way, but pointing it his direction, right? Walking along his path, right? He rewards you, you know, in eternity, but he also, you know, get reward in this life, you know? When you, when you walk the way God wants you to walk, it's not like you get money and cars and, you know, fame. That happens to some. But what you get is love, peace, joy, it's the fruit of the Spirit, right? Those things that really you can't, money you can't buy, right? And the world seeks, but never finds, because they don't have this. They don't, they don't, they're, they're looking in all the wrong places, right? right? So why is this chapter here, right? Uh, and you know, we, we look at it, and we see, all, you know, these faithful men uh, and women <clears throat> who, uh, you know, did things by faith. They, you know, they didn't see with their eyes. They believed God, okay? And God gives an account of this hall of faith, right? Well, the reason is because of the few verses right in front of it, all right? And, uh, and, and the reason is because the writer of Hebrews is challenging, is concerned, okay? He's, he's challenging the, uh, the, 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 the Hebrew saints, the, the kingdom saints, that there's problems coming, all right? So in chapter 10, verse 25, <clears throat> as we mentioned last time, 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling ourselves together, right? So he's, he's challenging, he's trying to, Provoke them to walk in a certain way. You know, hold fast to what God, you know, verse 23 says, Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. God is faithful. He's promised something, right? Okay. Uh, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and the good works. I mean, we need to encourage one another. Why? <clears throat> well, not forsaking, summoning ourselves together, and getting together and gra- gathering together like in church, like you're doing right now as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, and then what's that next phrase say? As you see the day approaching. See, for the kingdom saint, there's a day, a day that's approaching, and that's that tribulation. Okay. That tribulation, the seven-year, didn't want, didn't want to write it. Okay. Seven-year time period, the, the, the 70th week of Daniel. It's, it's the last piece of the puzzle for the nation of Israel before they can move, well, before Christ comes back, okay? Well, actually, Christ coming back is the last piece of that puzzle. And 70 weeks are determined upon 
Israel and that last week is a, uh, is a refiner's fire week. It's a time of, uh, the Bible calls it a time of Jacob's trouble. You know, Jacob had his name changed to? Israel. Israel. I mean, it's his trouble. It's like, it's, it, it describes it as like a woman in travail, okay, that's in labor, right? It is pain, wave upon wave upon wave of pain. And the Word of God even talks about that the nation is brought forth like a child, right? Okay? Is born, born in a day, right? They come out the other side as a righteous nation, a holy nation. Now, part of the reason why they're righteous and holy is because when Christ comes back at the second coming, he cleans house. If they're not righteous, they're not holy, they're, they're, they're sent off, you know, Depart from me, cursed into everlasting fire, and uh, where it was created for the devil and his angels. All right? he, cleans, he, cleans the, he cleans things out. The, the, that's the time period. So anyways, here they are. Israel is sitting here on this side. All right? Israel sitting you know, on this side of the tribulation, and they're looking, and I didn't leave enough room, for the kingdom. The kingdom on earth, spoken about by Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, right? And so what it says here, as we see this day approaching. So the writer of Hebrews is sitting in here, as I, I keep pointing this out. So the writer of Hebrews is sitting here somewhere, all right? And he doesn't see this. He doesn't see grace. He doesn't know what's going on happening today. Grace, this age of grace was called a mystery. It was something God kept secret. So it's somewhere in here, all right? Um, and, uh, you know, not, not understanding, it doesn't, doesn't understand that yet or whatever's going on with that because maybe he hasn't heard from Paul yet or anything like that. But he does know Timothy and some other things. So, but he's writing in the fact that they have a chance. And that day is approaching, all right? And so they need, they need to face that in a certain way. So if you go over to th uh, verse 32, okay, he talks about that, you know, that when they first got saved, verse 32, but call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions. Partly, it was, partly whilst you were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst you became companions of them that were so used. That is, when you got saved, you had problems. There was a lot of afflictions because, one, you joined, you know, the, the church and you were being persecuted. You remember what the Apostle Paul did before he was saved? He persecuted who? He persecuted Christians, you know, the Jewish church, right? The kingdom church, right? They were under that. And when you got, they got saved, they were part of that because that was what was happening, right? And he also says, well, then you also, you know, you, you sort of identify with whoever the writer of Hebrews is. You started hanging out with him and, 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 and had issues as well. In verse 34, it says, For he had compassion of me and my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a far better and what? Enduring substance. It says, you have, I mean, you endured through that. You need to keep on hanging on. And by the way, you endured, endured, yeah, endured, endured through stuff going on here, and it's not even the tribulation, all right? It's tough, but when the day approaches, when you go through that day, it's going to be worse, right? And he says, uh, you endured here at the beginning here because you know that God has something in store for you in heaven. It's, he's gonna, the kingdom of heaven is going to come down. And he called it an enduring substance. What's verse 1 say of chapter 11? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. That enduring substance, you want to see that, trace faith, right? Okay. Cast not away there, verse 35. Cast not away there for your confidence, your hope. You, you know, it's going to get hard. And, and, uh, and, and what it says there, which hath great recompense of what? Reward. There's a great reward in store. Don't lose faith. All right, don't, you know, you, you need faith. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive what? The promise. He's pointing here, he's pointing here, here, here it is, here it is. But I can't see it. You know, my eyes, I can't see it because I'm, you know, there's all this problems going on and it's going to get worse. And so he's basically saying, you need faith, all right? You need faith. You need the, verse 38 says, now the just shall live by Faith, okay, you got, you know, that, you know, you're righteous, you need to, but if, and then if you draw back, my soul shall not pleasure him. So if you walk away from that, God's going to be displeased, because what's it take? Without faith, it's impossible to please God, all right? He's re, you know, basically saying, here's, he's setting him up for the, the faith chapter, right? Here's, here's what it takes, here's what we need. By the way, that's what all of us need. I mean, that's obviously, but, it, you know, he's talking specifically to these kingdom saints, that are, that are uh, 
you know, that are either struggling or going to struggle. Verse 39, he says, but he says, he says to them, he says us, and says, not to us, but the group he's talking to, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. That's basically, you know, you don't, you don't get there, but of them that believe to what? So, so he's talking to believers, he's talking to children of God, okay? He's talking to the saints, they're called saints, all right? They're, they're God's children, those that are in Christ, not the body of Christ, but in Christ, right? And so then he throws, so then he begins to give the answer. So, so those, those verses 32 to 39 are a preface to, you know, what, what he's going to say here is it's going to take faith. And he gives them example after example after example who have individuals who have, you know, stepped out by faith. They didn't see it. They didn't receive it. They didn't have it, but they believed God. And God said, look, that's what, that's what it takes, Right? That's what it takes, you know. You know, can you see God today? Do you see God today? It takes faith, right? It takes faith. I mean, you see him in your word, perhaps. I mean, you can see, you know, the, uh, what he's done. You can see evidence, right? There's a whole series of, uh, there's a whole type of theological teaching. It's apologetics, which is defense of the faith, that basically shows outside the word of God that God is who he is, right? Uh, but anyways, in chapter 11, that's what's going on. So again, verse 1. Uh, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It goes back to verse 30, 30, uh, 34, I think, uh, yeah, that enduring substance. Right? Uh, in verse 4, it says, notice this, by faith Abel, is this Hebrews 11. We're, just gonna, we're not going to do every verse, but you read it on your own, you'll, 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 see, you'll see these truths. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was what? He was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by, him, by it he being dead yet speaketh. You know, his, his faith points out that he knew God, that God, you know, that he was righteous, that he was, a, was something, because he came to God the way God said for him to come. What did, you know, Cain brought a sacrifice. Yeah. Cain, Cain brought the best that he had, right? But it wasn't God's way. Cain came by works or things like, look, this is the fruit of my hands. It's better than what you're saying, right? You want me to, you want me to go to my brother, buy a sheep, because he was the herds guy, okay? And then kill it and give it to you. That's not for me. I mean, I just, you know, I, you know, I just, you know, and then God says, well, if you read the account, God says, okay, okay, you don't want to get it from your brother? It's right outside. <laughs> it's sin lies at the door. It's, it's right outside. Go get it. It's there for you. You slaughter it. I'll accept it. I'll give it to you to give to me. All right? In fact, that's the reality of everything that we have. What have you received that you weren't given by God? All right? There's nothing you've received that, that, that you've got on your own. God, God, is, God is in the neighborhood of heaven because the air you breathe and the ground that you walk on, you know, the, the energy you have, your very life is from God. All right? So everything we have received, there is nothing that, God, that you give to God that God hasn't given you. Verse 6, faith, verse six is, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. You know, it, it, it's, gonna, it's what it's going to take. We can't, you, you don't, don't take your eyes off the prize, all right? Here's the prize. It's the kingdom. It's the promise. It's the, it's the hope. It's what Israel is looking for. It's the, it's, the, it's the new covenant in operation, all right? It's what the new covenant is, okay? It's about that, okay? He says, don't take a, you know, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, right? You know, if you, go, if you um, uh, go back, you know, coming to God is talking, in this case, about praying, okay? Because that's how you come to God. Okay, pray that, that, that he, you know, we'll read it again. But without faith it's impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently, what? Seek him. Go back to verse 19 of chapter 10. Having therefore, brethren, What? boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, right? By a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God. Is, that is, they, they, have a, they have a high priest, and there's now the, the way to the throne of God is open. Okay? It's, 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 it's made clear. It wasn't that case under the law, right? I mean, you, you had a priest who went in one time a year, Okay, for the day, on the Day of Atonement, right, to offer for the sins of the people, all right, and, you know, and then God would receive that, right? But, like, just a high priest, right? 
Well, through Jesus Christ, okay, who is the true high priest, that's the book of Hebrews is talking about, okay, that's, it's a new and living way. It's, now he's, it's through him. Okay, they have access through him. And now let's bold, boldly do it. So, hey, go. Okay, without, you know, you know, you know, when, you, when you seek him, when you, or this is verse 6, for he that cometh to God, believe that he is, that he's God. Right? Don't go there thinking you know, that he can't do what you ask. Right? Is there anything too hard for him? There's nothing too hard for him. God can do all things. So believe that he is, and then that he is a rewarder of him, them that diligently seek him. That's really being sought by prayer, right? You know, and, and they, you know, are, isn't that what they're going to need when they start walking through this period of time? You know, go back to Matthew 24 real quick. So the apostles asked the question, you know, so they, you know, they were... Um, in verse 3, Matthew 24, the Lord Jesus Christ, as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and the, the end of the world? And it's sort of like the end of this age, you know. When, you know wh when, when is it? And he's talking about when's the kingdom, okay? When's it, when, you know, when's, when's it coming, all right? And, and when, you know, and... and um, and you know what? You know what? What's going to happen, right? By the way, they asked the same question again right before his ascension, and he says, "He says, not for you to know yet." Okay, okay, God, you know, it's it's in the God Father's hand, and you know, you'll find out when it happens, right? But, but anyways, uh, uh, verse four, and Jesus answered and said unto them, "Take heed that no man what deceive you." Writer of Hebrews is basically I was, that's his concern, right? He says, "You guys," in chapter, I think it's chapter four. He says. I'm concerned for you because you're dull of hearing. You, you just, you know, you're just, you're not, you're, you don't know what's going on. You can't discern, um, discern between good and evil. So I got to give you a very quick lesson on how to do that, all right? And so the, he gives them truth about who Christ is, right? Okay, don't go chase an angel, okay? Don't, you know, don't chase something who looks like Christ, because there's going to be those who say they are. Look what it says, verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying what? I am Christ and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that, that ye be not troubled, for all these things when yes come to pass, but the end is not yet. That stuff that's happening right, right at the beginning of the tribulation. For the nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. This is like the first half of the trib. Not in the land. So Israel itself, you know, those that are in Israel, they are, there's nothing like that's happening. So that's why they hear of rumors, and rumors of wars, because it's happening over in that country on the other side of the globe, America or South America or somewhere like that, or in China or somewhere like that, right? Okay. Verse 8, all these, and then, you know, if you read the book of Revelation, you know, I think it's chapter 6, you have the four horsemen that come out, right? And if they're, they're equated with famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and you know, those, those things, right? All these are the beginnings of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. And what? And shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Part of the reason for that is in the book of Revelation and elsewhere, Malachi talks about it. There's these two witnesses that stand in Jerusalem. And for two, three and a half years, they point out that there's this guy that's, you know, it's really influential. And they say, he's the Antichrist, he's the Antichrist. Now, he's not revealed yet, but he's pointing that, they're pointing that out, they're saying that. They stop it raining other places in the world. They basically said, yep, you know what, you know, you're, you got, you're, there's a lot of sin over there in some country, and so they, 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 they cause it not to rain. They're going to be hated, and Israel's going to be hated, all right? Verse um, 10, And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many, and many, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And that's not salvation, soul salvation. It's talking about another type of, like a physical salvation. And this good news, okay, of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. The way the Lord Jesus Christ describes the end is the second half of the tribulation. Okay, because here it is, verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, that's chapter 9 of Daniel, okay, uh, stand in the holy place, 
whoso read it, let him understand. The Apostle Paul gives us better another understanding. He talks about that in Second Thessalonians chapter two, that Antichrist, the man of sin, is going to be called the son of perdition, is going to sit in the temple, call himself God. All right, he's going to show that he's God. That's what that's talking about. Verse 16, Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let, them which is, uh, which, let him which is in the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Okay, and basically you need to flee. Flee because what's going to happen is Antichrist is going to come into the city. He's breaking the treaty. All right, so they need to flee out. Anyways, but the, you know, it's going to be tough, right? There's going to be deception. The love of people waxes cold. Nobody, you know, brother against brother, sister against mother, a daughter, you know, whatever. It just goes, you know, it, it's, uh, it's an awful time. It's the second half of the tribulation. Verse 21 says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. That is, if you continued on any longer, okay, not one, you know, no flesh could survive. Okay? And if you read the book of Revelation, which is really a summary, of, well, not a summary, but a lot of it is, you know, it's, it's prophesied in the Old Testament. Lord Jesus Christ just talk, talked about it. All right? It, it's, it sort of leads you along that path. Back to Hebrews 11. All right? So anyways, they need faith. Okay? They need to diligently seek him. They need to be in prayer. All right? That's that's what they need to be doing. Or otherwise, they're gonna, they're they're not gonna they're not gonna make it, right? They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna fail. They're gonna fa- you know, they're gonna fall in some fashion, all right? <clears throat> Hebrews down to verse thirteen. Okay, sort of a summary. Talking about you know we have here we have Enoch, we have Abel, we have Noah, we have Abraham. Verse thirteen says these all died in faith, not having what received the promise. But having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. You know what? The, the Israel, need, they, need to, they need to realize they're not of this, right? They need to understand they're strangers and pilgrims on this earth and that they need to embrace the promise, right? Okay. And it says there, for they that say such things declare plainly, verse 14, that they seek a country. Okay. You know, it's God's country, his kingdom, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is a heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them, what? A city. So it's a city of God. It's going to come down for them. He's prepared them for a city. And it says, by faith, Abraham, when he had tried up, offered up Isaac, he that had pro- rece- received the promises, offered up his only begotten son, whom was said that in Isaac shall I see be called. Basically, Abraham offered by faith, accounting that God was able to raise him up. He just trusted God completely. All right. By the way, it says there, from whence also received him a figure. That basically, he was sort of raised up, right? Right before he was ready to kill him, God allowed him to live, right? All right. So anyways, by, you know, they, didn't, they didn't find the promise. They didn't have the promise, right? But they, by faith, did what they needed to do. They, they, had, they had difficulties, right? Moses is another account. So down in verse 14, or uh, where do we, 24. Okay. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called what? The son of Pharaoh's daughter. Notice this. This is, this is, a, this is a, a type of what's going to happen to them in the, in the tribulation, all right? Let's pick, watch, watch what's going on here. So, so by faith, Moses, so by faith, the, those that are um, God's children in the tribulation, think of it that way, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. You're not going to accept what Antichrist is going to do. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. That is, when Antichrist rises up, they can't buy or sell, Right? Well, if you want to buy or sell, that's, you're going to have to accept something, right? You're going to have to do something, all right? And, and God says no, all right? Esteeming the approach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect under the recompense, for he had respect under the recompense of the reward. He looked forward to the reward, what God said, all right? By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. By faith these individuals are going to have to forsake, really, Antichrist's kingdom, Right? And they're going to have the wrath of the king. Right? For he endured as seeing him who is what? Invisible. Right? 
Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as on, on by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were what? Drowned. Drowned. You know, they, you know, God pr provided a way. God will provide a way. The writer of said, God's going to provide a way. He's going to protect you. Go to Re Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. More than this, but this is an account. So this is in the middle of tribulation when they flee, right? What happens in the middle of tribulation when, um, why it gets so bad is because Satan and his angels are cast out of heaven to the earth, right? When that happens, the devil, the devil indwells Antichrist. He becomes the son of perdition, right? And then he's, he's like, you know, he's the devil on earth, right, in, in, in human form. Um, in verse 7, it says, There was war in heaven, Revelation 12. And his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon against his, uh, fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon uh, was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan would deceive the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And that's the reason why it's the great tribulation, because now it's like, you know, crazy. You think it's bad now. Okay? I mean, wait, wait till the devil and all his angels are running around, and they're... they're they are kept here. They can't go anywhere else. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accused of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they, verse 11, they, talking about the brethren, overcame him. That, you know, this is how they're going to get him. By the blood of the Lamb. Okay, so they have Christ. By the word of their testimony. So they're being confronted. And they love not their lives, what? And the death. Christ said that you know, many are going to be killed, right? Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, okay, that's probably you, and the angels that aren't on the earth, the good God's angels, woe the inhabitants of the earth and to the sea and the sea, for the devils come down to you know having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Notice this. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. And you have to read the the, the picture right before this chapter, but it's talking about Israel and, and the man child of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, the woman were, and to the woman, Israel, were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness. What did Christ tell them to do when they saw like the, you know, the, yeah, the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet? They're supposed to flee, right? So he gives them an ability to flee, he, to protect them, just like Moses fled with Israel, right? How many people fled approximately with Moses? Three million. Yeah, two to three million, right? So it's, it's a lot of people, right? Okay, so they weren't like running. I mean, they had babies, they had children, right? They had all kinds of stuff, right? So God sort of protected them and carried them on, right? He also provided a way for them to get through the Red Sea, right? That's, I mean, verse 14, read it again. And the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place. So he's got a place for, to protect them. Where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time, that's three and a half years, from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth waters of flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. So he sends out something. Maybe it's literal water. Maybe it's an army. I think it's like an army that's chasing after them. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So what happened with Israel, or with Israel when they fled in, in Moses' day? was that when they fled, they went out to dry ground and then the waters came down upon them, right? So this is sort of like opposite. So it's like, you know, so it's like the flood is swallowed up by the earth. So it probably opens up and swallows up, you know, probably the army. Uh, maybe, it's a, maybe, it's a, maybe it's a flood, but I think it's more of an army. Okay. Verse 17, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is what the writer of Hebrews is trying to prepare them for, right? If they didn't flee and they didn't get protected and they didn't do that, they're sort of left behind in the world. And now it's like the Antichrist is going to set up the mark of the beast and he's going to, you know, you're not going to be able to buy or sell and all those things. So how are you going to survive, right? Okay, well, it's going to, it's going to get really, really tough, right? Really, really tough. They need faith. Chapter, chapter 11 of Hebrews, back there one last time. Verse 32. So it begins to sum... Yes. 
Since I only have a day, one more day, yeah. the, the rest of the Hebrews, go ahead. Sorry. So if Satan and their, his angels are cast, cast down in, during the middle of tribulation, okay, and we say that the prince, the power of the air, is in control of this, country, of this world right now, I'm having a, a dilemma here. If they're finally being cast down, then how in the world are they in charge of our world now? Well, you don't have to be in the same, I mean, I mean they're not, they can be here. It's just their, their place is in the heaven. Not where God's at, but in the heaven. So that's, you know, and, and the devil can be here, but his place is there. I mean, there's, there, you know, that's where they want to be. God created, if you go back to Genesis 1 and, and compare it, God created the heavens, the heaven. He placed all the, he created positions of authority, put the angels in them. And then after some time, I believe, he created the earth, which was where God said, I'm going to dwell amongst you, right? So, I mean, uh, so the earth is, is, a, is another, is, is like where his, where his throne's at, okay? The devil led a rebellion. God the Father stepped outside the universe. That's the third heavens now. The containment of sin is the universe, all right? But anyways, but... He's 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 right. He set up he set up the system. He 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 he's the spirit that works in the children of disobedience, right? So he you know so he's so he's he's in control, but he's not here present now. When he's forced to be here, all right, you're going to concentrate the problem, right? And uh, see, right right now that the heavens, the reason you don't see a lot of the stuff that like say went on by the time of Christ, when 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 Christ was on the earth, you see a lot of demonic activity. And you have people leaving their habitation, okay? They, they're, they're coming down, they're indwelling people. And the reason is because the battle's for the earth, right? Where the battle today is for the heavens, right? We, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places, right? So, so we're, we're wrestling the, the, the conflicts that way. So the battle's on his front. So you, you know, sort of like the front line's somewhere there. Uh, when he's thrown to the earth, the front line's on the earth, all right? So that, that's where the battle will be. We're not part of that battle. Chapter 11, verse 32, okay? If you were to read down to the rest of this, you have based an account of all kinds of other individuals, right? And what shall I say more? For the time shall fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, and of Samson, of Jephthah, of David also, and of Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith, they did stuff. They subdued what? Kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of the weakness were made strong, waxed violent in a fight, turned to fight flight the armies of the aliens women receive their dead raised to life again and others and then you know so you have this sort of positive thing right through faith they had victory 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 but then others were what they were tortured not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings yea moreover bonds and imprisonments they were stoned they were sawn asunder were tempted were slain with a sword they wandered about in sheepskins and guys, I remember Pastor Culp talking about that. They'd uh, sew, sew people in like a, like a sheepskin, and then they'd wet them down, and then as it dried, it would just shrink and suffocate them slowly to death. Pretty good message. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in deserts and, and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, notice, having obtained a good report through faith, what? Received not the promise. So they didn't receive the promise, but you have a chance, as you have a chance. And by the way, they didn't. They, because what happened was, instead, God brought in this. So they all, you know, the, who the writers of Hebrews writing to, a, who's specifically writing to, is to a generation that didn't make it. However, God's going, this, this book becomes relevant when we're raptured out, because there's a generation that's going to go through the tribulation. So it's written to that generation that's going to go through the tribulation and face that. They didn't receive the promise, but what he's saying is you have a chance. Don't, you know, they're, they're, the, the, the promise is, sorry, the Lord Jesus Christ said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's within reach. You just got to walk it by faith, right? Not for us. I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're, we don't have to, you know, you're, you know, you're going to heaven because of what Christ has done for you and you trusted Christ, right? Verse, chapter 12, verse 1, we'll stop with this verse. Wherefore, seeing we have also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight 
and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Here's the, here's the premium example. Here's the, here's the greatest example, which should be in chapter 11. But they put the division here. You know, again, those divisions aren't whatever, but because he's the fullest example. He's the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and set down the right hand of the throne of God, right? So the issue is he's the, you know, he's, he's the, 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 the greatest example. The Apostle Paul talks about Christ you know, being the greatest example as well in Philippians chapter 2, right? right? And then he has other examples, right? The writer of Hebrews says, the Lord Jesus Christ, he's the everything, he's, he's the one to look to. So lay aside, so we need, you know, we, you, know you need to, you need to you know, run it, you know, you know, face it, okay? You can, you know, you'll have victories or you'll die, okay? It's one of those two, right? Okay, that, that's what's going to happen and, and most will probably die. I mean, the 144,000, which are, which are individuals are full on sold out the Christ that are going to, be, going to be going to be saved at the beginning of the tribulation by the witness of the two witness, the witness of the two witnesses, every one of them will be dead by the middle of the tribulation, right? You know, so they all they're all they're all uh, they're all in, all in heaven with God at that point by the halfway. But they've they're full out sold out, and and they preach the gospel of the kingdom to every person on the face of the earth within three and a half years. Let's uh, let's pray. Father God, we're thankful for today. We're thankful for your, for the, the, your word and the ministry of it. We thank you, Lord, for just uh, your good news and that, uh, about what you did for us, Lord, that we don't have to go through tribulation. Lord, you tell us that we are not appointed to wrath, but attain salvation by the Lord Jesus Christ. And we look forward to the day, Lord, when you come back and take the body and take a body home to be with you. Maybe it's today. And Father God, we're thankful, Lord, for just your gifts and your grace. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do today. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You've been listening to the High Bandwidth Word Podcast, Transformative Studies in the Word of God. I hope you've enjoyed the study. Please subscribe, like, and comment. This podcast is available on many podcast platforms. Just search on the title. Now, until next time, fight the good fight of faith, and God's best to you.